Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Word Camp. I am Latoya Smith. I'm one of the volunteers in the AV Wrangler, and I want to introduce Alex Moran. Alex, in, he actually immigrated to the U.S. in his 20s, and he started his own business while he was a freshman at Brooklyn College. Uh, so he's been with WordPress since 2008 when it was still a niche blogging platform. There was no Word content management system yet. And Alex is the founder and CEO of Transla Translation Cloud, the company that employs an army of linguists and does language translation services in over 100 languages. So let's give Alex a round of applause. Start the presentation. I would like to say a big thanks to WordPress organizers. You guys are awesome. Uh, thank you for this uh, incredible opportunity to, to present. Um, and I would like to thank all the community of WordPress users. Since uh, when we started off in 2008, I didn't have no, I had no clue that we grew up into such a in, in, um, impression, uh, impressive community. And today we are seeing WordCamps popping up all over the world. And this is a great example of the successful life uh, integration. Today, I would like to, uh, to share with you my topic on, on market penetration and uh, should give you some techniques on how to handle uh, your localization uh, needs and what is exactly this entails. Uh, first of all, I would like to give you a little bit background of who I am. Uh, thanks for attending. I already mentioned that I'm, I'm a founder and CEO of uh, Translation Cloud, the language provider in, uh, in New York City. And we have headquarters in uh, Jersey City, across the Hudson. Uh, but I'm also, uh, the reason I'm in, in this industry and I'm, uh, and I'm speaking to you because I want to share my, uh, my incredible knowledge I've um, uh, amassed uh, from 15 years of uh, Hard work, as in, first as an immigrant, first struggling for, you know, for to find a job, and then now I'm starting to figure out how to put things together and uh, I understand better that what uh, uh, localization and marketing in foreign countries is, and therefore I'm able to pass my knowledge to you, you know, with the one knowledge that I paid high, big price for. So this is the incredible uh, opportunity for you to to listen and uh, and pay attention. So if you're interested, let's, let's, let's keep moving. Um, the businesses I'm, I'm part of is Translation Cloud, Akuna, Canvay This, Canvay This is one of them. Um, I'm into, into all sorts of localization uh, projects. And fun fact about me, in, I'm a winner of the uh, Higher Power Award in 2012. My firm was uh, nominated uh, as, the, as one of the successful uh, Companies that actually, in the midst of recession, you know, hired so many people, we were, we were proud of it. I, I went to Washington, D.C., got my work, got my uh, glass badge, and so on. So, here are your expectations. You know, you, you, you go to business, you go to marketing, you, you feel like a ninja, right? You, you jump in high, you make big kicks, and... Uh, this picture should be more like you know, two guys standing together. You, know, you put an apple on top of the head, and then you try to kick it with the with the head, right? So, uh, but in reality, in reality, what I'm saying to you is, uh, it looks more like this. Is the video working? So, in reality, it looks, there's no video, but the reality looks like there was a funny video. Thing. The, two, two girls are playing with each other. Another girl imagined that she's a karate kid already, and she tried to hit the glass on top of the, of the head, and she smashes her, 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 her friend. So, uh, so, I want to manage your expectations properly. You, know, you, you are uh, in the world of, of business, 
And whenever you feel you build a theories about the, your success, we all imagine things, right? We we have uh, our ideas, our goals, but in reality, sometimes it could be slightly different. And therefore, such events as 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 WordCamp are very uh, helpful for you because you can you can do and learn from the experienced entrepreneurs like myself, and hopefully that let them get into the same um, problems. Um, what I will cover today is uh, four important uh, uh, topics. One is the I'll give you a brief uh, a brief explanation uh, uh, about the market penetration. Then I will teach you how to do the proper WordPress localization listing. And then I will give you some ideas on your pricing strategy, how to how to price your product properly. And, then I'll, and, and last, I'll give you effective marketing channels so you can uh, extend properly into your language. Uh, since I introduced myself, now let me, let me ask you a few questions. Um, please raise your hand whoever is, who is the plugin developer for WordPress. Okay. Um, could you raise a hand who is the uh, who is the business owner? Business owner. Okay. So we have a pretty good audience here. We have uh, plugin developers and, and business people. So this 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 is the good stuff for you then. Um, foreign market penetration. If you if you are uh, familiar. Oh, by the way, who is not from New York? Raise your hand. Who is visiting? Visiting, visiting. Yeah? Okay, guys, welcome. So, um, if you are born in America, you, you are, you understand that the world, you can actually have a limited knowledge of what, what's out, out there. But as myself, I'm an immigrant, I was exposed to both worlds. I'm from Belarus, or to, as, as both Russian, I had a, uh, I was part of the Soviet Union when it, when it collapsed. And in the future, uh, I went to America when I was in my twenties, and I see a different world, capitalism, something else. But people who are born in America, they have limited understanding and, uh, and knowledge of what it, what is out there. Therefore, we uh, we have to look and we have to travel first. If you travel a lot, for example, even for work camps, there are events out there. You get to experience a lot of countries. You stay in hotels. You get to, you get to speak with lots of people. And you see that they all speak in different languages, and it makes your communication harder to to learn. This is the this is the common problem. You your boss or yourself, you could expect it to be very easy experience. Um, Google is not the the only uh, choice today. It was effective before. But as all marketing channels, they, they, this, those channels are burning out. So you have to look for other opportunity. And what is the market penetration? Let me give you a, a brief uh, introduction. So market penetration is the process of going into uh, with, uh, it's selling the same product in the, to the same uh, segment of customers. Therefore, if you have a, your own plugin, you don't need to create another plugin. You have to sell the same plugin to your to more users on WordPress, right? So you have to penetrate the market and get a higher percentage of, uh, of downloads and market share. So there are three ways to extend this, is to uh, find new users within current markets, so you can increase penetration. Uh, you find new uses for current customers, extended use. Sometimes you can write a new feature and, and penetrate with that feature as well, which uh, wouldn't be important for your target audience before. And you can use uh, uh, also more usage per customer. This relates to uh, to cell phone companies, to broadband providers. They want to keep offer you more uh, more of the same stuff. So more gigabytes to download, uh, more minutes to, to talk on the phone. So this is what I send to use. And now I'm going to give you uh, some uh, brief introduction to MBA if you if you study for. Masters, they will probably bore you with those with those charts. And this is a general chart to give you the hands of metrics. Uh, and market penetration, as you can see, just the one quadrant out of the four uh, four tiles. 
its existing product and its uh, for, for an existing market. It's, it's a very low risk strategy because you don't have to diversify, you don't have to spend money into R&D, to, to pay uh, other people to experiment with your, with your software. It's just you know, packing, the, packing the product and selling it everywhere. Now, from, from point A to point B, this is the very common discussion. You look at the successful entrepreneurs and you think, oh, this guy is a successful success. He's been born like with a silver spoon. Uh, but in reality, your success more looks like this chart on the left. It's, more, it's like your downloads of your plugin. I took this picture from one of the plugins on WordPress. And it's up and down strategy. It's, it's, it's not linear. Your success is never linear. And when you're an entrepreneur, when you go up, you always have your down moments. And, uh, and in order to reach this car, and get a wagon, like if people in Russia don't adore this car because lots of successful entrepreneurs drive it, this is your motivation. This is your motivation. Why, why you are in business? Because you want to be from point A to point B, from zero to something. And the number of downloads, the number of activations successful on your plugin, is a good indicator that you're moving into the right direction. How else would you measure it? The more adoption rate you have, the more penetration of the product plugin is, the better. But market penetration does not start by, by itself. It's, um, you has to, has to first see on, on, on this chart, from animal to a dark, dark container, where, where your startup is. If you don't have a domain, you cannot do, do the plugin. If you don't have a web, web hosting where this plugin is, is located, you cannot have a plugin. There's, you should fill, fill in the prerequisites and then move forward into the market penetration. But the, the timing is always now. Because in my experience, you, you procrastinate, there's always a, uh, a temptation to procrastinate. The deadline is out of you. We'll all wait till the last moment and write the papers in the last night, right? When we, no when we build businesses, or for example, we save money for, for our personal uh, things, we, try, we tend to procrastinate okay. important decisions very long time. Uh, whenever we get sick or you know, when we have a term, terminal uh, condition, then only when at that moment we try to you know, do some important things. And uh, my understanding is, if you are into the business and, uh, and you want to be successful in what you're doing, always try to set some, some hours a set of your busy schedule because we're all uh, surrounded by operational things. I'm a, I'm a full time entrepreneur. I wanted to do this presentation, but there are billions of other things I wanted to do at, at the same time, right? So it's all, everything competes for my attention, for my, for my desire. So I had to put um, some hours aside from a schedule and just do this presentation. Because you don't have to understand that there's no one else would do it better than you. There's certain things you have to commit to. And the right time is, of course, now. Moving forward, preparing for penetration. Who knows the word penetration? Penetration. Some people are smiling. <laughs> so, that's, that's part of the marketing, right? You have to understand that this is, you know, uh, this is, uh, this is the way we come up with the product. We, do, we want to be memorable, because the way our brains are wired is anything that's predictable and tedious, we tend to ignore. Everything that is unusual, like changing the color of the slide, and using the word that maybe suggests you a wrong uh, or other meaning of the word. That tends to bring us attention span. And if you win the attention, you win the adoption of your product. This is very important. You will spend less money per click, less money per view. Just like that, it will, it will ignite the viral, uh, the viral virility, I call it. Um, so penetration, is this going horizontally or vertically? Um, the, way, the way I call it the market penetrator by startup, it's because I think penetration goes from up, down. 
Uh, and this is not what you're thinking. This is, uh, comes from the space aircraft. There was a Mars expedition. And we had to launch the rocket in the, in the, car, in the, in the space. And we toured it, it launched toward the Mars. And the mission of this uh, craft was to actually penetrate as deep as possible the soil so we can get the sample of what beneath the surface. Okay, so that's as easy as it is. This is our meeting. But this is important when you design your product or the name of your plugin, make it stand out. Um, so this part number two is the actual nitty gritty stuff I would like to share with you about the plugin localization. Uh, we all herd animals, right? Our limbic system, which is inherited from, from animals, from even from dinosaurs, some people claim, uh, consists of multiple parts. But the limbic system is the limbic system, is the one that actually relates to uh, the aspects of your lives when you tend to compare yourself to other, other people. So very social. Sometimes when you're daydreaming, you're sitting and you probably read the book, and sometimes you don't you not understand that uh, you basically think about something else at this moment, and then you realize, oh, what did I just read? Did somebody have this, this type of situation? Or some person talks to you, and you're sort of listening actively, but you are actually, at the same time, you are somewhere else. So this is the condition we, as humans, have all the time. So there's nothing to worry about. It's called um, comparing. So we, we always compare our things, uh, ourselves, our lives, as a social person to somebody else. So if you, are, if you have your own circle of friends, you have your own circle of co-workers, the plugin, the, uh, plugin developers, and you constantly think about things like, oh, do I owe money to somebody, or uh, this, uh, this guy, there's a bill to do next time. There are always uh, those ideas on the back of your hand. And therefore, we tend to relate to people only who are in the same situation, and the same uh, uh, type of uh, condition as we are. For example, you have, uh, uh, if you look at the spouse of successful marriages, they uh, both husband and wife look the same. They look like a brother and sister. Because people tend to, to flock to the people who look like, like, like that. It's just wired in, in, the, in the nature of humans. And therefore, if, you are, if your product is in the language of your audience, English, Russian, Spanish, Arabic, you will have much higher success rates with uh, relating the product to them. So I will cover uh, three things when it comes to plugin localization. It's how to translate your readme.txt file, which is your description file for the plugin. I will uh, tell you how to use the function E, if you're not familiar with it, how to do the uh, extraction of the strings. And I'll also show you how to translate your plugin files so you have a full package running for you and no obstacles. The readme file, number one. Each plugin has a piece of translatable parts thanks to WordPress. And in WordPress community, that wasn't the case all the time. When we started in 2008, we had a very tough time translating the software. That's, that's why we didn't do it. We just didn't do it. We had an English version, and we thought American market would be sufficient for us. It's a huge market. We can sell it here. But fast forward, I think around 2011, we started to noticing that a lot of frameworks, uh, CMS, uh, under management system, competing with Drupal, uh, with the WordPress of Drupal and Joomla, they all start to roll out this uh, capability. To, localized things. So this is the, for example, your WordPress plugin. If you're a WordPress developer, this is the page where your plugin is. You have to click on the uh, development link, which will take you to your interface where your strings are used to be translated. Uh, in my example, we, we started off the localization process with uh, the Russian language, and uh, here you have to see that you have several parts, and it looks at first very con uh, consuming, uh, very confusing. That's why I call it the how to interpret this. Some people don't even know what to go there. 
uh, you have uh, development stage, stages and uh, stable stages. Development means it's only visible to you right now, and uh, stable means it's visible to everybody else. So in order for your listing to gain this coveted uh, extra link in the interface of WordPress to the foreign version, and therefore participate in the search for uh, extra keywords in the other language. You have to have both both of these in a green, green color. So if you click on the if you click on the uh, on the Russian language, it will take you to interface which looks something like this. On the left hand side you have original string and translation on the right hand side. You double click on the translation and you provide your own translation. In my experience, plugin uh, translation is a pretty straightforward process and you can even use something simple such as uh, machine translator, whichever you like, Google, Bing, or Yandex, or anything else. Um, I tried, uh, I'm, I'm a bilingual person, I tried to Google Translate and you know, this is probably good advertising for them, but uh, it, they did pretty, pretty good translation because they, they, the text of the plugin is relatively simple. You don't write complicated stuff like on your plugin. Download this, click there, you know, activate there. It's fairly simple. So the machine already memorized that and reuses those translations, which looks like human, uh, human quality. Therefore, it's fairly straightforward to translate. The only caveat is uh, when I encountered something uh, specific, when you have the variable inside of the text string, for example, we start with a percentage sign, one, S, whatever, two, uh, then uh, Google tends to do a much worse job. They, they, they add like extra characters, extra space bars, so you have to have like a human to, uh, to look, look, look at it all. So the interface is like this. Um, also, you don't have to be an admin to, to translate this. You, have, you can have your own dedicated users who are um, part of your localization team. So if they, have, they should have the WordPress username and you whitelist them, and they can have access to this interface and translate it for you. Then you only have to do is to moderate the translation and activate it. This is an additional slide on how to, how to show when you double click on the on the on the right hand part, you see this particular string and you can copy and paste your translation. And this is how the translation looks like. If you are uh, if you're admin, your translation will go um, whitelisted already. If you are a contributor, your translation will go hold for evaluation. Now, part number two, make it multilingual. The functions, the, the strange functions, under double underscore and the function E. Who, who, was, uh, who already had experience with this function before? In your, in your practice? <laughs> okay. So these are our fairly new functions, and me and myself as a developer, uh, I was surprised that my job became so so much easier than before. Because before we had to struggle with .po, .mo files, we had to download those PO editors to extract the links, uh, to start the text files from WordPress, load it in our desktop software, and then translate it uh, manually by a few months or email as attachments to our freelance translators, and then bring it back and upload to the website. The new approach is no software, which is really awesome for, for ourselves. That means everybody works in the browsers, there's no exchange of PO.mo files, and also what these functions do, uh, do take into consideration. This is more like a technical uh, knowledge probably. If you're, if you're beginners, you might not notice the, the difference, but uh, programmers struggle with number of uh, variables. When you do the localization, you have to create a new variable for each new translation string in the whole approach, in that field file. In this approach, you just copy and paste the slug of your plugin, and you don't have to come up with any new names. So there's less, less work for you. Nice and simple. 
So the three steps to get your plugin ready for localization probably weren't aware of it before, but when you submit your plugin to WordPress directly, it's not yet ready for localization. First, you have to change, you have to add the text domain. Text domain, it's uh, your WordPress slot. Whenever you submitted the plugin to the WordPress directory, uh, some moderator, Mika or somebody else, would, would ask you what would be your uh, uh, slot name for uh, for the for the URL. The one would be in a your WordPress domain URL. In our case, we added convey this dash translate. So this is our plugin. So this is the, where you add it to the to the plugin page. Step number two, we have to load the external stream files. This is your .po file. We don't know where it is now. It's somewhere in the cloud. We just load it, and it's very simple now. You update one, one place, one string, and it's good to go. And lastly, you have to update, you have to append the text strings. Whenever you have the print function, which brings in it needs to be a function echo, which was bringing the, the it, it was displaying the text information on the, on the, on the browser. Now we have to replace it with function e or double underscore. And this function basically also uh, clear up the code because if you are if you are an ethical person, you can you can write the, uh, a JavaScript and put it inside of the script uh, file. And echo function will, will print it out and then launch the JavaScript because browsers interpret the, the JavaScript as the execution code. So you can grab person's cookies and you're good to go. So it's a bit, what was a big vulnerability threat. Therefore, this the team approach took care of it and now we have nice clean functions. So if you took everything together and did it nice, this nice job, you will have a new sexy with print interface. Will be in a foreign language. Congratulations. You'll be off, off and ready to go to, to the foreign markets. So the interface finally should look like this everything green. You activate uh, development, you finish development, you finish uh, the plugin and readme file, which is your script. How to test a new look? Uh, it's very simple. Your plugin, uh, when you activate WordPress, uh, it asks you what, in what language you want your WordPress to look like in the beginning. Uh, it's located in your settings tab. When you log in as an admin, you go to general, and then you select uh, site language. So if you did translate the plugin, you can test it by switching this drop box. That way. Display your WordPress in different language, and you'll be good to see. So you'll have the whole look of your plugin. Now, I'll, I'll give you some of the ideas on how to. Uh, foreign penetration also, of course, it is about this SEO. And SEO is a manipulation, right? You have to be, no matter what people think, but you have to really stand up for yourself and you have to manipulate sometimes uh, uh, the, the way to, the way you promote yourself is the, is, is the, is your activities, it's how you do it. And I split up this section into uh, a couple of points. One is clickable images. What we as humans tend to look for is other humans, right? If you are in the business of uh, selling to, to, if your target audience is uh, male, you display males. If your target audience is female, you display females. If you, if you sell to kids, children, you display children. It's that simple. It's more, it's more, it's more clickable than than uh, a cartoonish image or a logo. So if you have your plugin in a directory, which you can pick for exposure, you can pick for for CTR, so to speak. If you have a real human image, that uh, colors I suggest is blue, green, and white. Uh, in uh, in my experience, these colors are safer because people feel uh, we all have our own guard and we would never see uh, these colors, we feel more, uh, more confident. Look at the Facebook, the Facebook is in green, uh, in blue. Uh, look at all 
successful websites there. They tend to have this palette. Uh, try not to use red or orange because these palettes make people a little anxious, a little worried. And you don't want your customers on the first impression to feel anxious. You want to feel, okay, this is a, this is a safe place. Nobody's going to harm you. That's fine. Number two, you have to plug, you need to put uh, keywords in your plugin names. If you translate it, for example, I highlighted this plugin as an example. Uh, they tried to uh, put in two keywords in the title, and both of them work perfectly. So if you, if you go to WordPress directory, you type in these keywords, you'll, yeah, you'll find it that plugin. That works. WordPress is your friend. WordPress directory is your friend. It's not Google, it does not calculate the backlinks, it doesn't have any difficult uh, uh, algorithms with CTR. Uh, it's more like a directory, so whichever is in the title is being uh, triggered by the search pretty, pretty successful. The same thing goes for the description. The description, as you can see, is only a small snippet, so try not to do it a long, a long description. Uh, more like four or five lines of text. Anything more than that will be more discovered. Uh, Multilingual tags. These are the tags uh, that are participating in the search. They're more or less now duplicated the way I see it. And they're not participating well in the, in the search results. But you should also be thoughtful of the tags which are uh, displaying your your target audience. If you are expanding you know, internationally, think of the uh, high traffic mode search keywords. Now, this is about the manipulation. So this this point, I'm only bringing you as an example. I'm not urging anybody to to do that because you, as developers, should be like antivirus you know, developers. You should know how viruses work, right? So. Those are the botnets. This is the, the way uh, some developers could uh, inflate the active installation by triggering you know, thousands of uh, fake websites and installing a plugin. And therefore, they would look like they have millions of activations. And therefore, users would think, oh, this is a safe plugin. This is good to, good to try. So you can, you can rent the botnet. You can buy it. You can build it yourself. It's, it's all out there. So you should be vigilant. You should, you should understand that this is this might be a problem. But if your competitor does it, let us know. <laughs> uh, and number six, also very, uh, very questionable. I don't urge anybody to use it. It's called uh, asking for plugin ratings. Ratings work really well for the WordPress directory. Therefore, obtaining them is very important. But you should not never do this. Uh, it's called sock puppeting. It came from the cartoons where they had a socket. Uh, you had an arm covered in a sock, and in a sock. It pretend to be like a human, right? It was talking. So it's, it's, it's the same technique when you go, when you go on, on WordPress and say, hey, you're also a developer WordPress. Download, download my plugin and give me a good rating. You don't, you don't have to do this. You shouldn't do this. Or paint somebody on Fiverr. You know, it's, it's unethical. There was a case recently with somebody in that call. So if you can never see it, let us know. Uh, now, moving to the uh, pricing strategies for market penetration. Part number three. Pricing is very important because you are in the WordPress directory. WordPress is all about free, right? It all started as a free stuff. We want the free, free goodie. You know, free chocolate, free coffee, and free plugins. We don't want to pay for anything. But we as developers, we are in the business of probably doing, making some money. Therefore, we need to figure out how to price our product. So the penetration pricing, again, from the uh, MBA school, if you attend one, uh, is, is look, what looks more like this. You start, you have a very low entry point, and then you try to lock in the customers as much as possible by contracts, by some agreements, and then you try to uh, raise the prices and not let, let the customers go away. It works very effectively in the cell phone industry. Uh, people give away cell phones, sometimes free of charge, with a low monthly payments. And then when the yearly culture expires, they, they, hide, they, they increase their, their rates. With your plugin, you go with the free offer, of course, and then you try to hopefully 
bring, bring people up in the, in the scale. Price giving is the strategy when you start very high. If, you, for example, you have a very enthusiastic, you know, energetic crowd, people just wait in line for your product, like for Apple iPhones or MacBooks, whatever, they come up for the sale. You start selling to enthusiasts, then very uh, price unsensitive, they don't buy it at any, at any rate because they want to feel uh, important. It's a, again, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a short social thing. They, they, as, as mammals, we try to be stand out in the crowd. And this part will actually give you this, this status thing. And then once the market is saturated, because enthusiasts are only 3% of the total population, you have to go down, down the scale and offer the same product for less. Every day, every day low price is the price employed by Walmart, for example. You know that there's always something, there's no uh, special, so every, every day there's a low price, therefore your consumption is very even. And Premium pricing. This is the pricing that most developers have. It's, a, it's on it's on Word, it's on WordPress. It's on, on web hosting. It's in the language industry. Everything that comes with the consumption, like monthly payments, you want to have a, a premium pricing. So expect conversion rate around one percent. So you never be attracted a free, free user. Very rarely people convert. Therefore, they have to build a lot of adoption. A plugin that actually is not is not deleted by by owners. Now moving quickly to the marketing channels. There are free channels and paid channels. Whenever you try to prepare your invasion in a foreign market, go with something free first because it's easier to experiment. There's a little less risk of failure, and then go to the paid channels. The advantage of the paid channels, of course, you get much more higher value for, for your money, and you can reach very targeted audiences. Free channels is your WordPress directory. Try to do as much as, as possible with your WordPress directory, make the images clickable, translate them, and you're good to go. It's your search, if you're dominating the search, will bring you a lot of new users. Paid channels are Google AdWords, Microsoft Bing ads, similar to Google AdWords, Twitter ads, Facebook, Instagram ads, and YouTube ads. So as you can see, they are all ads. The, those are the channels that are still working for us. That's, a, that's why I, I'm bringing this up in the, in the, in the conversation. Uh, but as you know, in America, the cost per click is getting astronomical. But the cost per click in the developing countries where you want to be, the plugin could also need to be adapted, expanded, is still wrong. Therefore, even though we are burning out, but they're, they're still good. Uh, what works better even? In Google AdWords is always big per click. So whenever it's, if it's a human being or a, a robot, you're going to pay uh, per click. YouTube ads, on, on the other hand, is new frontier. New frontier. If you have uh, uh, with uh, our products should have users, right? And users always ask you questions. How to install this plugin, how to uninstall this plugin, how to activate it. And your YouTube ads, if you shoot something like a tutorial, you can promote it. And this is also very effective because it will take a lot of uh, pressure of your, of your support team. That really works. And uh, one of the most important channels is the content creation. There are content consumers, we're all, all sometimes we see that we're on YouTube all the time, you know, watching, we start watching something simple, and we came to YouTube to watch maybe a, a little tutorial on how to install the plugin. But since YouTube is so addictive, we end up watching something else. And this is very time consuming. So you want to transition from a uh, consumer's territory into a creator territory. Creators are, there are much less people. It's more like an elite team. You're one percent of the of the population. You are creator. You create a YouTube channel. If you have if you have the experience in the, in writing good quality code, you can you can uh, you can uh, share this experience with a screencast on your screen with your audience. So there are some already very uh, effective YouTube channels that started off as a as a free project and then moved to the very uh, high volume of subscribers, and they can dictate a lot of uh, 
marketing power. Uh, effective channels to promote your YouTube channel is the collaboration. In the beginning, you have no viewers, no subscribers, no nothing. And you have to pay somebody or have a friend who would introduce you and also do the collaboration. So it will bring a lot of uh, audience from, from them to you. Uh, you. You can do commenting. When you subscribe to your favorite bloggers, you, you activate this, uh, the ring button, and whenever they all publish the video, you're the first one to comment. This also works. Uh, buying subscribers. There, there are marketplaces where you can buy subscribers. It's like an empty room problem. If your channel has zero subscribers, people will feel like, oh, this is something shady. You'll be more likely to, to subscribe if there's already subscribed. So first you buy it. Uh, product conclusions. This is when you advertise your, your, your channel or your product. It works for WordPress plugins as well. You have uh, already established uh, bloggers who write about, about WordPress. You ask them, hey, do something for WordPress. Content outreach. This is when you publish articles. No, forget about your own blog. Your own blog nobody reads but you. You have to publish your blog with articles on someone else's blogs. And you have to have a team, somebody who emails constantly to fellow bloggers and tells them, hey, I'm gonna I will pay you, but you have to have to publish please publish my article. This works. Make sure your, your articles have UTM labels. This, those are the labels that that actually bring you the idea where, where the customer came from, the source. Very important for the marketing. So you can see which which blocks you, you can invest more money and which one to draw. And finally, we start a podcast. Podcast is uh, is good for those who are driving the car. You cannot watch the YouTube, but you can still you know, transmit your your message, your experience, your ideas on the podcast. Now, it's, of course, it's going it's, it's going away because YouTube is replacing all of that. We, 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 there's, there's studies that people listen to YouTube more than watching. So, this concludes my presentation, and uh, I'm open to questions. Thank you for, for watching. Since uh, the plugins usually provide first the first layer of translation with the machine, therefore the risk is, is limited to whichever is offered by the machine. But uh, if a sufficient number of users ask for this uh, rare language, I'm sure we can be standard. Okay, guys, so if there's no more questions, then we're good to go. <laughs> Thank you for watching.